What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to build a simple sudoku solver using backtracking so let us get right into it all right so we're going to build a simple sudoku solver in python and we're going to use backtracking for that now before we get into coding let's talk about what backtracking actually is backtracking is an algorithm that is actually quite simple uh, to implement, but maybe a little bit more difficult to understand, especially if you're not familiar with recursion. So if you have not worked with recursion before, I highly recommend you to familiarize yourself with the concept. I think I should have a video on recursion on this channel in my Python intermediate list. If not, let me know in the comment section, I'm going to make one. Um, but recursion basically means a function calling itself. So let's say I have a function that says, um, print a number and decrease that number by one and then print that number. Uh, basically, the, the function would be, let's just make an example here, let's say print, print and decrease would be the function and then I have a number. And what I could do is I could print a number and I could call the function print and decrease again uh, on number minus one. And I could say, okay, if the number is zero, then we're just going to return, for example. Um, and if I didn't make any mistakes, this should just print, or let's say print and decrease 10. This should print those numbers 10, 9, 8, and so on, as you can see it does. So this is a recursive function. We're not going to talk about recursion too much here, but that is a concept that you need to know about in order to understand what we're going to implement in today's video, which is backtracking. So basically we use backtracking whenever we have a series of decisions that can lead to a result. So in Sudoku, for example, uh, we have a bunch of given numbers. You should also know the rules of Sudoku. Uh, we're not going to explain the rules of Sudoku here. Um, but you have those numbers that are given in the individual cells and you need to find uh, the positions of the remaining numbers. So you need to know, okay, where is a one, where is a two in the individual cells and so on. Um, and choosing a number for a specific cell is a decision that you can make. So for example, let me just copy uh, the grid that I have for this video. This is nothing too fancy. This is just a list here, uh, a list of lists actually. So we have this Sudoku field here. So this is a three by three cell here. Uh, can I do this with, oh no, come on. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's like, like those 0000003 this is a three by three field in the upper left corner. Then we have also the rows and we need to find certain um, numbers for the individual positions. So a zero means undefined in this con uh, context because we have one to nine. Uh, so if I choose to make this a five, this would be a decision that I make. And this decision can lead maybe to the solution. And what backtracking does is it just brute forces all the possible ways. So it will see, okay, this is a zero. So let's try setting it to a one. Let's accept that one is the right solution. Uh, in this case, it also works because one is not in this row, uh, in this column, one is, one is not in this row, and one is also not in this field. So it would be a valid uh, thing to try. Then we can go here and say, okay, it cannot be one. Uh, can it be uh, two? It cannot be two because we have a two here and so on. And we would go through all the fields until we find that for a certain cell, we cannot find uh, a number. So let's say um, I try a one here and a, uh, I don't know, a five here maybe and so on. And everything works out well, but sooner or later, maybe in this field, I see that I cannot choose one, not two, not three, not four. No number actually fits here. So uh, then I would know that something went wrong. So I'm going to return false and we're going to try something else. So the basic idea before we get too complicated here and too deep into the explanation, the basic idea of backtracking is we're going to just go for it. We're going to just try something that makes sense, at least for, uh, for right now. And we're going to go down the rabbit hole until we see that this branch of decisions doesn't work. It doesn't lead to the one result because a Sudoku has one correct result. And if we don't get to that result, this solution is the wrong one. So we're going to try something else. So basically, we're brute forcing uh, all the possible scenarios, all the decisions, and sooner or later, we're going to find the one decision, uh, the one decision chain that leads to the solved Sudoku. And if we don't find it, then the Sudoku has no solution. So this is what we're going to do today with backtracking. 
All right, so let us get started with the implementation. Now, first of all, you need a grid. Uh, so for example, this is one grid that you can have. Basically, you just say grid equals, and then you have a list of lists, and you have nine lists inside that list, because those are the rows. And inside of those rows, you have uh, nine numbers, which are the columns. So uh, this is basically just a Sudoku field. Of course, we don't have the um, the lines here that separate the individual three by three blocks, but you can imagine that. Uh, and of course, you don't have to use this Sudoku field, you can just use any Sudoku field that you find online or that you find in some newspaper, I don't know. Uh, and you can just enter the numbers zero means there is no number there. And all the other numbers are just filled out. So this is what we're going to work with. This is just one grid. Um, and the first thing that we're going to implement here is a helper function that we're going to need because of course, think about what I just said, we don't want to try all the combinations, why would you want to go down the rabbit hole? Uh, if you don't even check for, uh, for a valid try. So for example, if I accept a three here, this would not work because I would have to see that a three is already in this column and also in this three by three block here. So I cannot use a three on this position. And of course, I also need some criteria to say, okay, there is no possible solution. So we need to have a validation function that checks if a certain try is valid or not, if we can do this move that we're trying to do. So we're going to say def is valid move. And we're going to pass that function the whole grid, we're going to pass the row, the column and the number. So we're asking, basically, in this grid, at this position, is this number a valid move? And if it isn't, we're not going to do it. So first of all, let me just get rid of that, because we're going to enter it later on. Uh, we're going to say if is valid move, um, we're going to do first check, is there something in the same row? Is there something in the same column? And is there something in the same block uh, that has this value already? So we're going to say, for uh, x in range nine. So for all nine, either rows or columns, whatever, we're going to say if the grid in that specific row, for each x in that row, if we have um, the same number, then we're going to return false. Because obviously, if in the same row, we have this exact number, this cannot be a valid move. And of course, I can just copy that here. And oh, sorry, I can just copy that here and do the same thing with column. So x here and column here. Um, so if we have the same number in the same column, of course, it's also not a valid move. And now for the next one, we need to do a little bit more, we need to find a corner. So we're going to say corner row is going to be row minus row modulo three so that we find the the top left row of of this three by three box. So the corner and also the column. So we're going to say corner column is going to be column minus column uh, modulo three, and then we say four x in range three, for y in range three. We're just going to say, okay, if I have in the grid, corner row plus x, corner column plus y, if I have a number inside of that three by three field, then we're going to return false as well. And if I have not returned false up until now, then it must be true, then it must be a valid move. So just return true. This is a very simple helper function. All it does is basically just looking if there is the same number already in the same row, in the same column or in the same three by three field. So this is just a helper function. This is not the backtracking yet. Um, now the tracking the backtracking function is just going to be called solve because it's going to do all the solving. And it's not really complicated. It's actually quite trivial to be implemented. So we're not going to have a lot of code to write here. The tricky thing is understanding what is happening, because recursion might be a little bit confusing for beginners. So we're going to start by saying def solve, and we pass to the solve function, the grid, the row and the column, and we're going to pass row and the column because we want to have a recursive call. Uh, we want to always be, uh, we want to be able to say, solve from this particular position onwards. So 
basically saying up until there we have solved everything which allows us also to go outside of the recursion uh, recursion once we return a true or a false um, and then we can you know adjust uh, adjust the next actions that we take so first of all we're going to say something very simple if the column equals nine which is overboard uh, which is uh, overflowing basically so because we have an array of uh, size 9 or a list of size 9 which basically means that uh, the last position the last index that we have the last column value which is actually a column value is 8 so if we are above 8 if we reach the 9 what we're going to do is we're going to check if we are also in the last row so if the row is 8 so if we have go uh, if we have gone over uh, overboard with the columns and we're also in the last row we have reached the end and the Sudoku is solved so we can just return true because we have the solution we have reached the final uh, point otherwise if it's not equal to 8 we're just going to say row plus equals 1 and column equals 0 so the idea here is just that if we reach uh, if we go past the last column, we're just going to go into a new row and start with the first column again, except for the case where the row is already the final row, which basically means that we reached the end of the grid and we didn't have a return false up until now, so we have found the solution. Uh, this is uh, this logic here in a nutshell. Not too complicated. But it may be confusing, I understand it, because... Um, you need to wrap your mind around the idea that you're returning to a former recursive call, that you're going deeper and deeper and deeper, then you rec encounter a return false, and then you go back up uh, the recursive ladder, so it may be a little bit difficult to wrap your mind around the concept. Um, but what we do anyways here is we say, okay, if the position, uh, if, if, the, if the cell that we're currently at, which is grid row column, if that is already set, so if we already have a value larger than zero, we're just going to proceed to the next one. So we're going to do a recursive call here. We're going to solve for grid row column plus one, which is why we need to check for column equals nine here, but only for row equals eight, because we never call recursively row plus one. We do the row plus one in here if the column went uh, above the boundary or beyond the boundary. Um, we don't do that for column, we just increase it by one. So if we increase it by one and we are already at the valid position eight, we're going to encounter column equals nine, which uh, triggers this block of code here. So we call recursively solve on the next thing, because if we have a value above zero, we assume that this value is already the correct one. So we just uh, proceed. Um, in the other case, so if we don't return here, we're going to continue with the code. And here what we need to do is we need to try for all the individual uh, possibilities. So for a number or for a num in range 1 to 10, which is actually in Pythonic 1, 2, and so on up until 8, 9. So we don't have the 10 actually. We're going to try if all these numbers uh, or for all these numbers, we're going to say if is valid move in the grid, in the row, in the column with this number, is that a valid move? And if it is a valid move, we're just going to say grid row column is going to be the number. And we're just going to assume that this is true. We're just going to say, okay, for this branch of trial and error, we're going to assume that this is the correct solution. And we're going to say if another recursive call, if solve grid uh, row column plus one, then we're going to return true. So the basic idea is that if we're at the end of the grid, we return true because it's solved. And here we just say, okay, is it valid? And if it is valid, then we're going to basically say, uh, okay, uh, just set it to that value for all of those values, by the way, not for the first one, for all of those values, we're going to do that. Uh, and we're going to go into a recursive call, which is, of course, a recur uh, not recursive, an exponential runtime because we uh, split into a lot of different uh, possibilities here. Um, and if this solution here is valid, then we're going to return true up the ladder, up the recursive ladder, uh, which indicates that this is a viable solution. So what we're going to do then is we're going to say grit 
row and column equals zero here, because basically, if we don't find any valid moves here, we're just going to or if, if this specific thing is not valid, if we don't find that this current number is a valid move, we're just going to leave it at zero. Um, and in the end, if we don't return true up until the end, then we're going to return false and there is no possible solution for this field. So that's actually it. And the only thing that we now need to do is we need to uh, apply this to an actual Sudoku grid. Again, what you do is you just say grid equals list of lists. So we have here 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, for example, 0, 0, and so on, nine and nine numbers and nine rows. I'm going to copy that because there is no educational value in just typing it right now. So make sure your grid looks like this, a list or multiple lists, in fact, nine lists inside of one list. And inside of each list, you have nine numbers, don't just pick them, you need to find actual Sudoku's because otherwise you're going to get no solution. And once we have that, we're just going to say if solve grid zero zero. So we start in the beginning. If that is the case, we're going to say for I in range nine, this is now just a printing, this is no logic for J in range nine, we're just going to print grid I J, and we're going to say the end is just a space so that we don't do any line breaks. And once we're done with all the J's, we're just going to print a line break here. Um, and of course, if we don't find a solution, so if it returns false, we're just going to print no solution for this Sudoku. There you go. So let's run this and see what happens. As you can see, we have a solution and it is also the correct one. You can check it out if you want to. We have each number in this column and row here. So column row, we have each number in this three by three field. So it looks like a, uh, like a good solution, like the solution, the only solution. Uh, so it did work. And we can also try to do something else. So let's say, for example, I change this to a two which is not the correct answer. And if I now run this, we're going to see no solution for the Sudoku because we tried all the possible branches and didn't work. Of course, if I change this to seven, it will work because seven is the actual right answer in this case. And as you can see, it works. Uh, now, to be honest, I'm not sure what happens if I remove something, maybe it's going to go into an endless loop, or maybe it's going to give me one possible solution. Well, let's see what happens if I just remove some information. So basically making it kind of impossible to solve. I don't know what would happen then probably it would give me the best, uh, the, the first solution that it finds. So let's see. Yeah, it gives me one solution that is possible. It is not the only one. Uh, but an actual Sudoku has like one right solution. And that's it. So we can reverse that. But you can see it works with brute force or uh, with backtracking, you can see with recursive calls, we can find in a very short time, the solution for the Sudoku. But of course, solving a Sudoku is an I think it's an NP complete problem, to be honest, like I hope I don't say any bullshit here. But I think that solving a Sudoku is an NP complete problem. So it is uh, really not solvable in non exponential time, at least we don't know it. Uh, at least we don't know how to solve it yet. So you can look into MP completeness what that means. But I think Sudoku is MP complete, which is very hard. So just because it works on a nine by nine grid, don't think that it would work efficiently on a I don't know, 2000 by 2000 grid. Alright, so that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.